<laughs> Welcome everybody to the May cataloging SIG. Um, Yuyan was here and had a comment to follow up on something from last meeting with her links that she worked with Jason on. Yeah. Uh, Jason, last time uh, you gave me the scribe uh, about uh, track the 856 link click. Um, at that time, everybody tests all works except me. It, after the meeting, I figured out uh, is uh, I didn't go to my old pack to click link. I was still in the Koha catalog with the click link. So that's the that's that's the reason mine doesn't work. So it's nothing wrong with your script. <laughs> Thank you so much, though, Jason. <laughs> Good. I'm glad it helped. Yeah, this isn't exactly cataloging related. But um, George helped me with a script that I can put in the ISBN and I'll come out with the Biblio so I can delete some things uh, using batch delete. I guess it's sort of cataloging. That's totally cataloging. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it turns out that um, if the SQL script has a percent sign in it, um, I can't save it at all. Uh, I keep getting the connection reset. And guess what? It's my firewall at work. If I do it from home and I'm not connected to the network, it works just fine. Only took me a day to figure that out. Well, you did figure it out. That's yeah. the important thing. And I have another one, but uh, Bruce, you had a question. Unmute. You're muted, Bruce. Let's see. Carry on, Fred. I, we can get to me later. Oh, okay. Uh, yesterday, uh, you know, someone wanted a list of all the radiology books we had, um, which is fine. Unfortunately, the item search doesn't include ISBN, which could have been really neat. Uh, I ended up doing another SQL. Uh, which I need to learn more of because otherwise it would have taken me about oh, a quarter of the time. But what I did was try get the list of biblios, put them in a, a list, but a lot of the biblios would not add to the list. And that's still a puzzle I am working on. Has anyone uh, run across this? I mean, it, I mean, they're recently added. They're as far as I can tell, good standard mark format. They didn't show no problems in the catalog, but it's just, I get the message, the biblio number X was not added to the list. Any ideas? Did you find anything in Bugzilla related to that? I, by the time I finished what this person needed by yesterday, I was just too tired. I ended up uh, changing, well, printing the bibliotes as code three of nine barcodes and scanning each one into a cart. Um, I can usually find a workaround, but not really the most efficient workaround. The only time I've seen that message is if it, um, if the bib's already on the list. Yeah, it said check to make sure it's not already on the list. No, nope, they weren't. Hmm. It was about half of what I was doing. And anyone deal with uh, Rittenhouse R2 books? No? Nope. Oh, I envy all of you. <laughs> okay, I think that's all I, all the ranting I have for now. <laughs> I will mute you myself and let a special you. library. Nobody else has got experience in your topic. Yeah, it, it's um, it's it's a new puzzle to work on. Well, Bruce, did you want to bring your authority questions to the group? Yeah, I've been uh, working this problem. Let me uh, share a screen here and. Uh, See if I can show you what I've been up to. 
And maybe you can tell me if I'm doing something wrong. Huh. Let's see now. Okay. Um, I'm putting in uh, references. Mm -hmm. This one seems to work well. Uh, the, the, the fact that we've got Ireland in three different places has obliged me to <clears throat> put in links for the uh, patrons that aren't uh, uh, alert to these things. Uh, but I'm trying to come up with a C reference for Mormons, and this doesn't look quite right. So I'm wondering if somebody can tell me what I'm doing wrong, or if that's just the way it looks. Is your C from in a 410 field? Say again? Is the C from in a 410? Yeah. I think you're missing an indicator, but I don't think that would make a difference. OK. I will investigate indicators. Did you I try? Importing it from the Library of Congress? No, I'm doing it originally. Have... OK, because I would think they would have a lot of um, name. That would be a good authority to import from them so you don't have to do it all. <laughs> well, uh, most of my stuff is pretty peculiar, so <clears throat> I thought I'd just <clears throat> start with some easy ones. OK, <laughs> I will go and. Uh, look at what the big boys are doing and uh, see if that can show me the error of my ways. Yeah, the, uh, it's pretty easy to use the Z3950 to import the Library of Congress headings directly from LCNIF. Yeah. Oh yeah, and Barbara popped in the indicator. Uh. Okay, two. I can do that. Yeah. Did you have any other questions, Bruce? Uh, <coughs> with my health challenges, that's about all the trouble I was able to get Aww, into. Oh, I hope you're feeling better soon. If um, you have any questions setting up the LCNAF in Z3950, uh, let me know and I can uh, put something together to bring to the group about because we've got our setup and it works really well. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I'm uh, very familiar with it for uh, biblio references. I can't believe that the authorities are going to be that much different. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. I wanted to mention that uh, Lauren had sent out a great cataloging sheet to the group via our group email. And Anne Ryan had uh, posted also some excellent feedback. Yeah, and I can, I've revised it. Um, if y'all would like, to, I can send it out as a, um, cause I have it in Word. Thought it'd be easier to share as a Google doc, but I'm not quite sure. Um, but if y'all are interested, I can do that. And then I also have, um, I'm working on a framework that ha lists all the fields that are, I've put in the framework for that item, for a book item type, as well as a quick reference sheet that puts all of the ones you use all the time on the first page and everything else <laughs> on the second page. Nice. Um, if y'all would be interested in that, I can send that to the group. I'm working my way to journals is my current item type that I, <laughs> oh, that I am working mm -hmm. on for the framework. Um, oh. Or in what time is it there? Oh, well, I am in North Carolina. Oh, okay. So it is 11 o'clock. My training that was supposed to be from 1 to 2.30 got moved. So. Okay, I thought you were in um, somewhere about 12 hours away. Yeah, I had a meeting last night 
with librarians okay. in Chiang Mai, Thailand and New Zealand. And so I work for an international um, consortium. Right now, most of our libraries are in Asia and Africa, but we are expanding to the uh, North America and Europe and Pacific. <laughs> Maybe we just went, our team, we're with, I'm with SIL International and we just moved from Asia to global within the organiz organization. So now we're, starting to go, okay, we need to reach out to people. And I'm like, okay, before we reach out to people, I need to clean up all of our frameworks. <laughs> I need to clean up all of our authority. <laughs> I well, need to come up with a form of all the questions to ask a new library. When they come in, you need to give me this information. This is what we already have. So don't add to what we already have, you know? I know I'd be interested in seeing the material materials you're generating for sure. And I imagine um yeah. Anne Ryan <laughs> Me too. Okay. I'll send you the frameworks. I haven't done anything on really on framework, so okay. Out of curiosity, is there a way for someone to like export their framework from Koha? and then another library import it? Is that a yes or a no? I think so. I haven't I think done so it, too, yeah. but I think so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Me too, I, mean, I haven't done it, but I somehow have the impression where you know, my mind is going, so. <laughs> yeah, if you go into your Mark Frameworks, um, one of the option, both there's two options on each of those action menus for importing and exporting. Uh -huh. uh, frameworks and then I know that there's also a wiki page with some frameworks in it um, I'll try and find that okay. and put it in the chat that you can pull from the wiki and then import into because okay. some of the libraries I help aren't port aren't a part of our consortium so they don't get the advantage of me doing all the work and I'm like it'd be nice if I could just say here's the file <laughs> import it into yours there you go <laughs> Are they all using Koha? The libraries that I'm helping are using Koha or they have found, I've got the Chiang Mai, they're switching, we're having, they're with Assess It and we're trying to get their records out to move them to Koha, but it will be a local instance. And then I helped a library in Burundi. They found an IT person in Florida who could set it up. And they went to Koha, and so I helped them, and their local librarians are currently going through and doing Z3950 searches for all of their titles because they didn't have any subjects. Um, but if I had, if I could import that framework that I'm working on ours into their system, it saved me time and it really helped them out because it gets rid a lot of extra fields that are in the default that need to be there for everything but don't need to be there for a print book or an electronic book and i'm also pre-filling the 336 337 338 for some of them because as a cataloger it's a pain <laughs> i feel it's a pain filling in those fields and yeah, <laughs> it's a pain filling those in manually, and they're so much easier to add automatically. Yeah, Jason found the link on the wiki and popped that in the chat okay. about the frameworks. Thank you. Yeah, I kind of pretend those fields don't exist. Which what I do is just, um, well, we have OCLC, uh, just download the files and process them in Mark Edit or maybe Notepad. Mark mm -hmm. Edit is great if you want to add a lot of fields. Uh, like a 942 um, and it takes out some of the 650s that I don't use. Like, you know, we really don't need German in our catalog. Yes, I know medicine is based on German science, but very few of our people can actually read German. See, I have the opposite. I have to have it in all languages. <laughs> We're still trying to figure out how to do some of that because we work with local languages. 
Yeah, your technical problem of a medical library I have, but on the language end. So I'm trying to find a way, how do we reference the 7,000 plus languages that are in the world that we're going to have resources in those languages? Well, Koa can probably <laughs> do it. Just yeah, ignoring for the three three x six thirty six seven and eight. Mm -hmm. I think in the advanced editor you can do micro. Um, mm -hmm. so you just do that. Also, like me for my uh, framework, for instance, for book. Mm -hmm. uh, my framework already have that set. So if I add something new, the automatically will pump there. Also for the electronic framework as well, I use. So that way you, you, you don't need to type them. They were already there with the framework. So that's what I, I do normally, but I don't have experience in like a language thing. This, so that's crazy, so many language. Um, for, hi, this is Liz. Um, I'm in Kansas. Uh, Michael is actually on here, and we just um, started setting up frameworks for libraries that they can basically go to a link and click it. And what we do is we set up the framework how we like it. We create a mock record, and so when librarians are like original cat like original cataloging, it's basically mm -hmm. we set it up so that we have the leader fields filled in and we have those 360 or three X's fill uh, 300 fields filled in and all they do is they go um, like our biowaters can set up a button that they can click and just create a record off of that record basically copy catalog that record and then fill in everything so um, Michael knows more about setting that up than I do but we are like in the middle of setting up frameworks to do that for like our uh, DVDs and and like Raelia, like cake pans and stuff like that. I it's, would be interested. I'm eventually going to make it to those fields, <laughs> and I'm going to need something like that. So, yeah, if we could get together, it would be really great if those records could be contributed to the Coho Wiki for people to download. Um, I had put in a very minimal level record on the Coho Wiki. I'll look for the link for that, but perhaps those other model records could be contributed. Yeah, we, we've just started, so I think uh, we have mainly the Raelia or the cake pin one, and what was the other one we set up, Michael? I can't remember. It's been like a back burner project. Maybe he stepped away. I'll yeah. find out and I will uh, email it or bring it to the next meeting. Terrific. Thank you, Liz. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just came back. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Your ears were burning, Michael. <laughs> yep. What uh, We set up the Ralia framework and then what was the other one that we've gotten set up? Oh. Can you remember either? <laughs> Probably not off the top of my head. <laughs> okay, we're working on it. <laughs> Liz, could you send, could you export your Realia framework and send me a copy? Because that's one of the ones I have to create and it's like we have nothing to start off with. So it would be nice to have. Michael, do you know how to export frameworks? We could figure it out at some point. You can point. figure it out. Okay. I, d I did put the manual link for importing and exporting in the chat too. So. It, it's you. fairly simple. It's just you click the button to export to a file, and then you should be able to send it. Jason's awesome. Yes. Uh, Lauren, with uh, 300 fields you're trying to add, are they the same for each record? For the print, I have the 336, 337, 338 are uniform like they're already pre-filled in the framework okay yeah it's it's that rda um information yeah. it, it's it's like um where your 650 fields are important it's because it contributes to link data which we will eventually 
like <laughs> it'll eventually happen um but like for now we have like a, mar a mixture of mark and bib frame kind of combining link data mm -hmm. into the mark records and so your 650 fields are basically set up with like library of congress or mm -hmm. even dublin core or prism or whatever mm -hmm standard or schema you're wanting to use but that's just the controlled language so it links all those like records together really easily and so that's why pulling it from the library of congress is great because if everybody's using that then all those items are linked together commonly so if you click that item eventually with linked data you'll be able to go online hit that um ref that controlled term and it'll bring up your library or whatever's closest to you um, and so it's just, it's really nice in house in your own catalog, because it tells you everything you have, but once it goes live to a point, it'll link everybody. So please use your 650 fields. <laughs> oh, I use that. So I was just going to say if you had to add the 300s, you know, Mark Edit could do that in a trice, but it sounds like Co is doing it for you. As far as RDA, uh, Marshall Breeding himself told me that by the time uh, it becomes standard use, I'll be either retired or dead. So I'm not worrying about it. Yeah. Um, and with the 360, like the 336, 337, mm -hmm. 338, it does just depend on the type, item type. Um, so like you'll have different ones for Relia, you'll have different ones for video games, mm -hmm. audiobooks, things like that. So that's why the framework's nice because you can set up both your leaders to a point mm -hmm. um, and those fields, so. Well, and I think, uh, Yu Yan, you had a Mark question as well. And you're muted. Yeah, yeah. There yes, you go. I, yeah. Yes, I do. Uh, just, I just wonder, you know, on the staged mark record management, uh, did you guys clean and delete after you import everything? Um, maybe, can I show my screen? I share my screen or something? Let me, let me share my screen. Where is it? You should be able to share your screen. It uh, it should be at the bottom in green. There you go. Not this one, sorry. That's okay. We're seeing your screen now. <laughs> um, okay, let's let's open a new one. I think I share wrong one. Okay. Ah, oh, sorry, guys. It's okay. I think we've all been there when we have a lot of windows open. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Did you see anything now? Almost. It says you've, there we go. Ah. We're seeing your managed mark record screen. Yeah. You got so, it. So, so here, I just wonder, see those, I import some online stuff, mark record. So after this, I saw this, uh, action as clean as the need. Should I do anything with this? I, I already imported. I don't need this anymore. I think. Should I clean them in, on a regular basis? Do you guys do that? So I can comment that um, we're in a consortium, right? So we had lots of stuff building up in this. And at one point, it ended up crashing our system because it got too full. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a script that cleans it out. It's like the the cleanup cron job can can clean this out, I think. So we had Bywater set that up for us. So it just automatically cleans a certain at certain intervals or like gets rid of everything older than X date or something like that. 
Um, so th that's probably the easier way to handle it. So you don't have to go through and click the button every time. Um, so I, that's what I would advocate for. If you don't need it, I would have it added to your cron jobs. Uh, how, how do we do that? Like use you the just, report? You just open a ticket and tell them what you're wanting. Oh, uh, it's something they have to do on the back end. Okay, so is there any way if I want to manually do that? See, I, I know if I click delete, they, 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 be, they, just, but they just disappear? Barson, oh yes. Yeah, it is. So I can also manually, if I don't have like a large quantity of right. those. Okay. <clears throat> so I should do that in, in a regular basis. if you want Mark. to yeah but that is so it takes a while to build up to enough to make it a problem i would say <laughs> yeah yeah actually that leads to another question from me uh which is how uh, we get batches of or bundles of electronic books from let's say access medicine clinical key etc um, and sometimes they get discontinued you know, they go out of print or whatever you call it, going out of print for an electronic book. Um, and you know, sometimes they let us know which ones have gone out and sometimes not. So what I've been doing is, let's say I have a clinical key of, uh, let's say, a thousand books, which is, um, and what I've been doing is just undo the import and then putting in an, uh, the latest uh, batch from Clinical Key. Is that see, anyone see any downside in that? Other than I mean, what would, uh, if it were if the record also had an actual print book, would that be deleted if I undo an import? Would that make sense to anyone? <laughs> No, it does make sense to me. Um, I have no rational reason for it, but undoing imports always just kind of make me a little uncomfortable or a little squidgy. I always feel that deleting is just cleaner rather than undoing an operation to to let the operation go through the full cycle just in case but as i said i have no rational reason for that i tend to agree with you um. yeah i mean when i i don't know if it would try to if you undo an import i don't know if it would try to reuse a biblio number or not and that again makes me a little nervous yeah i don't think it does uh, I will say I have undone imports when I upload a batch and realize, uh oh, I forgot to include this field, which happens more often than I'm going to admit to. I think we've all been there, and and yeah, I've I've undone that sort of thing and then redone it, but I feel less nervous about it because it's the same batch. Yes. Well, does anybody else have anything they'd like to bring to the group? Oh, I, I think Margaret had her hand up. Hi, Margaret. Hi. Um, yeah, I I need some help with a report. I don't know how to I don't know how to make it. I want to know. I want to find all of the bibs that have a particular mark field when the item type is not something does that make sense it makes a lot of sense and uh do you know say for that item type were you thinking of an item type in an item record or one of the say fixed mm -hmm. fields in the bib record yeah that would that would work i think here's the thing um somehow we have um we're a public library. We have some young adult fiction that has gotten the um, 
the 521 field that we use to um, find adult videos to restrict the um, people from borrowing those. Only adults can borrow those. I don't know how they got into the book records, but I've had it happen twice and I want to be sure there's not any more of them out there. Mm -hmm. So I want to find the 521 where the item type is not DVD. So there are some fixed fields that uh, control, you know, that mention the video recording. Yeah. Um, but also if you mention the DVD, like those three characters, DVD, that can occur. Some libraries put that in a 300, some in a 538. Yeah. It's supposed and, to be in the DVDs. It's not supposed to be in the in the YA fiction. I'm trying to think if I have a report that does something similar that could be adapted. Uh, I'm not pulling up anything, but it it seems doable. You would just like. Yeah, I couldn't do, find anything. Do YA books ever have a 521? No, I don't think so. Okay, so if we could pull a report that shows few uh, records where the 521 isn't null, but the um, item type is DVD or the 008 encoding is for a DVD or something like that, that should work. Um, yeah, I so wish I knew how to do that. <laughs> Let me poke I can around think a little of, bit while, while you guys are still talking. I can think of a workaround, but uh, it, uh, not sure it would actually work. Um, okay, you're looking for uh, uh, bibs where the collection is YA. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think export will let you export all the YAs. Put them into Mark Edit and hit F7 to uh, add or delete a field and just delete all the 521s. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be the way I would do it, except it is sort of clumsy. And it's, you know, how people um, sort of compensate for disabilities. My disability in this case is I don't know SQL. Yeah, right. Mine too. <laughs> but I did just finish a Mark Edit class. Okay. So. <laughs> and I, I just, uh, sorry, I interrupt. I just uh, sent uh, some like report we wrote. What we're looking for on this 856 field, a certain like text. So we try to find out, we need to change that. So we try to find out in certain sub the uh, tag 850 like 856 in this case i think you can do a report which i i to grab to retrieve all those tag even the subfield within this tag with the report then from there then you want uh is that since you want to find like from the Margaret, is that you want to find the record, right? Item the, the biblical record for those certain uh, specific tag. Is that right? Yeah. To make a change. Okay. This one, like oh. eight fifty six. We want raise a is a link, right? Within the link, yeah. raise something that an access non billable. You see, ha, has a person sign there too. And then you try to find out this, then we can modify because then later on the link and has a little change. We we don't there's no way for us to change them one by one. So we try to grab all those eight fifty six has that link and then change to different text. That's what we had before. Once. Yeah, I see. So, yeah. I'm not sure that's helpful, but for you, but that's. Thank uh, you. <laughs> you're welcome.
I also put the link in the chat to the COHA reports wiki to uh, just a gentle reminder that I always like to throw out there that if you come up with a report to share it there, it's a great resource for the community and it will help someone somewhere sometime. Yeah, that definitely helped for me because sometimes I go there to looking for some kind of situation, then I kind of try to then tweak, mm -hmm. make a little change here, there to kind of see if that works for us. So I definitely that wiki place is really helpful. Well, I, um, I think Bruce might have another question. I do. Uh, in creating uh, new authorities, I came across the 008 field and things in there make no sense to me. I found the, the link to the LC explanation, but now I need an explanation of the explanation. I was hoping somebody could uh, share a link. We can certainly take a look at that. Yeah. Let me see if I can pull that up. Let me do that. Yes, please. And uh, some of this is, is fairly obvious. Uh, some of it is not. Um, At any rate, the uh, let me see if I can find the other screen. Here it is. This is the screen that does not explain itself. I Adam, think we're but... only seeing black right now. Oh dear. Well, yeah, that one's more... easy to ex to explain. There's nothing there. <laughs> Darkness, night. <laughs> it's it's the mark. Uh, it's the LC. Uh, definition of uh, field 008. Okay, let's see. And I it think... just so much gibberish in a few cases. And are you looking at the authority record 008? Yes. <gasps> okay. Yeah, Biblio 008, I got. Yeah. So let's see, I could share my screen. I've got it up here. All right, are folks seeing that? Yes. Okay, yeah, this is the mark authority. Uh, but yeah, it the mark authority 008 is a little cryptic. Are there any areas that are particularly confusing? <clears throat> you want a list? <laughs> uh, uh, the heading use entries. Uh, uh, the kind of record. And more further down. OK. Um... So heading use theories added entry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> In most of those cases, I will pick not no attempt to code. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No attempt to code is always appropriate. Yeah. And um, it's, but it's also the coward's way out. I'd really like to understand what this was in case it's actually useful. So not all these fields are going to be appropriate on every authority record. Uh, right. For example, yeah, the the heading use series, those are only going to be appropriate on 130s titles or uh, possibly 100s when it's an author added entry for a series. Um, and the kind of record. Uh, there are subdivision authority records. You're going to have 180s, I think they are. Um, I've only had half a pot of coffee today, so <laughs> I'm operating a little tired. Um, you know, 
OSVLC bibliographic formats and standards is pretty useful for explaining a lot of these as well. I'm going to stop sharing my screen while I attempt to find it so that you all don't have to watch me search. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a link to another uh, resource is yeah. uh, just what I'm looking for today. And I can always help read a particular authority rec, but let's see. Let's see the OCLC formats for authority records. Here we go. Drop this link in the chat. And it has more explanations added. So let's see if I can find. Okay, good. Well, one thing I've learned today is that 008 is like 007. Not all are created equal. <laughs> it's true. and. And I know that sometimes no attempt to code feels like the coward's way out, but um, <clears throat> minimal level is not necessarily wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and with these fields, a lot of times it's it's a balance. It uh, you could spend a lot of time coding, mm -hmm. and a lot of times the 008 is going to be exactly the same in your catalog for the different for, you know, for every series title for every personal name yeah there's some things i've decided to do without um, <clears throat> on the other hand I've, I've put an awful lot of energy into the 600 fields yes and that's that's really good <laughs> in my opinion <laughs> Yeah, it comes from knowing my uh, my patrons. They know exactly what they want, but they don't know where, what it's called or how to find it. That's what those fields are for. Well done. Yes. Okay, I will check your sources and uh, see if I come back smarter next month. <laughs> If you still find it confusing, shoot me an email and I could uh, locate, I could try to locate some more materials. I could also try boning up and uh, we could we could take a look together. Well, I'll probably just bring it back here because some of these silent uh, witnesses we have may be wondering the same thing. They usually are. Um, I have kind of a question. We're going to get a web dewey subscription and i've only used it a few times is there like anywhere i can go to do more reading up on it before we get it in on like the best way to build because i have like the 23 set but i would rather get to know web dewey a lot better because it's what's being updated does anyone have I don't use Web Dewey, but I know that there is this user guide that you may have already seen. I'm putting that link in the chat. Perfect, thank you. I just thought of a question with frameworks that if I can do it through batch, it'd be wonderful, but I don't think I can. Um, so I'm trying to clean up the frameworks. I have 2000 some records that use an RDA, RDA print framework. And I want to mix, I want to now move them to all of our book framework that now includes all, all the RDA um, information. Is there a way to do that as a batch or do I just have to manually open every record and change the framework? Does anyone know? 
I think I have to do it manually. I think it can probably be done on the back end, not manually, because <laughs> um, your your framework code is defined in some database field somewhere. So I would assume that it could be swapped out there. Um, but I don't know of a way to batch change frameworks on the, the staff interface. OK. Can you, like, could I export the records and then import them using a certain framework? Does that make sense? It makes sense, but I'm wondering, I, I would think that you would be able to change whatever coding it is in mark edit if that coding for the framework is truly carried in the mark record and then import them back and overlay them but i am not sure we are way out of my expertise area this might be a question for the main koha discussion list okay that would attract the attention of some of the support companies and developers who might be more familiar with it okay The general yeah. meeting is next Wednesday. You could bring it up then. Okay. I did look at the schema here. The framework code is a field in the biblio table. So like if if that field is currently populated with one thing, it could be populated with another thing in a batch on the back end. <laughs> okay. Please bring your solution back to the group, though, when you get it. I know we'd all be interested okay. in hearing about it. OK. Yeah. Yeah, our hard part is right now we don't have anyone supporting it, supporting us. We're all internal. And so some of that back end stuff is where it's, it's harder to do. But right. I'll the Coho community, though, is really supportive. So okay. I'll send yeah. an email. Definitely. I, I understand. I mean, <laughs> in my library, the back end is me. <laughs> and the front end. And <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> all the but ends. All parts of the horse. Um, <laughs> And this is nothing to do with cataloging, but uh, a week or two, I uh, released a video on how to set up COA from the command line, Ubuntu command line. So it may come in useful for your group. And Jason, eventually, uh, I'd like to move it to the uh, COA channel, COA US channel if COA US are agreeable. Yes, I need to add that to my to-do list. Yeah, I think it's a wonderfully useful video. And maybe you can move the scripts from the Avenging Chicken to COA US. Of course, that means I'd have to revise the, oh, no. revise the video. I can, I can just grab them and put them in our Google Drive and then link that in the summary of the video if that okay. works. I mean, there's no problem with um, bandwidth for the Avenging Chicken site. Uh, uh, yeah, so far, and I'll bring this up next week too, I've heard a lot of people saying thank you and one lonely 28-year-old woman named Susan who wants to try something new in the bedroom. Um, I thought maybe she could refinish the floor. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, this is being recorded. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, keep it clean, folks. <laughs> this, is this, a, is... this is a family program. <laughs> well, I mean, what else would you have in mind other than, you know? <laughs> well, and, and I see Barbara Johnson joined us. Hi, Barbara. Hi, everyone. I had several bugs to highlight. Yes, please. Um, I'll, I'll just say uh, I 
was wondering on the topic of bugs if anybody else would be interested in in a, a gateway export between OCLC and COHA for authority records, or is it just me? Ah, we have someone interested. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on on trying to create a bug for that. So Barbara, you've always got some great bugs for us to look at. Um, well, the first one, and I, it's several up in the chat. It's two eight. 28252, I think. Um, we were just thinking that on the add items page, that it might be nice to have that batch record modification option so that you didn't have to, you know, get your num either your bib numbers or your barcodes or whatever it is you're, you're needing to do in order to go to the tool, that you could just do it from the the add items screen. I don't know that we would actually use it all that much, but I came um, across a, an instance this week and it was kind of like, wow, that would have been nice if I could have just done it, you know, without mm -hmm. having to exit and do some other steps. And then, um, let's see. Another one is, um, 28251. And this one is just simply if you're using the batch item modification, when you're on that screen, after you get to the screen where it lists all of the items you are going to modify, um, there's no real indication of how many records uh, that you're dealing with. And if anybody else is like our library, maybe I'm working on that and then I have to stop and go to a meeting or I have to go to a public service point or something like that. And I get back to my desk and I've kind of forgotten where I am. And I'm thinking, I wonder if I'm dealing with what I should be dealing with. And it would be nice to see a count there just to have some, uh, you know, feel like you're dealing with the right things. And then this one, is 26869 and um, this one has come up for us where we've imported um, like a lot of uh, digital records, ebooks or whatever. And maybe when we first brought them in, they didn't have item records attached to them. And there's no way to batch create item records after the records in Koha, you have to export it out and create the item records and then bring it back in. I think I'm explaining that correctly. Yeah. Um, so that's yes. what that one is. Uh, that is when I undo import to catalog, go back to the mark edit file, and add the 952, which is you know, all, all the same. And I probably said this before and everyone knows it. If you don't have an item record attached to the bib, even for electronic books or materials, it causes all sorts of problems. So it, it, it is a good thing to have item records mm -hmm. for everything. I agree. Trust me, you, you don't want to go through that. <laughs> so go comment on that one then. And um, the last one I had was um, 26531, which has to do with um, being able to do a macro, but being able to do it where you're adding a subfield in the middle of a tag or a whole line. Um, we still actually use the, the 245H GMD. We mm -hmm. just still do because it's helpful and I don't know why it was ever gotten rid of. Um, and it would be helpful to be able to have a mm -hmm. macro that you know we could be in the middle 
and add that subfield because it doesn't, I haven't found a way to do that. Um, so comments, uh, votes, if you like them. Hey, Barbara, I want to mention why you, you said talking about uh, Create 856. Like we have a ebook, um, so we import all those ebook record to our system through Koha, like stage the mark import. But before that, we cre create a mark modification template just for all the ebook type. So for instance, so what we want, because mostly the 856 for that, it's all the same, like the, the location will be the same, like online for us. And the, the call number will be like also online. And so that depends on whatever you want, the location, call number, or even like which library you want to be. Like ours, or she or the library will be firm wide because just online. Anyway, so then, so the 956, you could set it up. Also in this template, you if you, the build record, some, some of the field you doesn't need, they also can delete when you import everything. So if you set up a mark modification template, when you import all the online, the ebook, so they will just modify or add field, remove field, just that when you when you import, so there's no menu need to uh, there's no need to manually add individual items after you import. So I'm not sure that really well, answer we, your question. We do that routinely, but um, one thing that we have problems with is we're using the um, the Biblioteca um, cloud plugin. And those automatically add our bib records, mm -hmm. but they don't create item records. Mm -hmm. And so then we have to go and create item records individually, or we have to export the bib records, create item data on the other side, or create item data through re-importing it by and using the template. But we are not able to do it without taking, without exporting and bringing back in. And that's like a whole extra step. And it would be nice if you could just do that within Koha. Okay. I'm gonna pop one more bug in the chat. I know we're, we've only got a few more minutes, but it's, uh, for the advanced cataloging editor for authority records. And I'm going to go in and comment on this because it's something I'd really like. Well, did anybody else have anything they wanted to bring to the group? All right, that may or may not work for Margaret's problem, but I put it in the chat. Hopefully it doesn't like crash your system. You can give me credit if it does. <laughs> the only thing I have to add is I really need to learn SQL. <laughs> I've been working through the, uh, the Koha US videos on YouTube, and they're really helpful. Well, I'm taking my car to be uh, worked over on Monday. <laughs> I can take a laptop with me and watch those. There you go. SQL and chill. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's one dealership in the DC area that knows how to work on an electric smart. I thought you were going to say teach you how to code in SQL while you're waiting for your car to be worked on. Um, if they offered that service, I would gladly take it. <laughs> I think all they do is offer Wi-Fi and coffee. 
Well, there's your million dollar business opportunity. No. <laughs> Car repair and SQL lessons. <laughs> Okay, I'll save that for when I'm too old and sick and tired and <laughs> stupid to do my job anymore. Uh, probably Tuesday. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Should have stopped it a couple of minutes before. <laughs> <laughs>